Welcome to Mark Porter Live. Today we're going to be looking at Zip Forms Plus and a cool little feature called Templates. When we open Zip Forms Plus, we land in the Transactions tab. The second tab over is Templates. And here's where I create templates for common situations like buyers and sellers. Well, today we're going to build a buyer template, and it's going to help me to save time when I'm in the heat of the moment to uh, connect with a new buyer. So what I do is make a template that reflects 50 or 60, 70 percent of the transactions that I work with with buyers, and uh, it, it begins right here. So I'm going to create a buyer template, purchase, residential, save, and it's blank right now. First thing I'll probably want to add is the cover sheet. If you're not familiar with the cover sheet, the cover sheet uh, is one place you can go populate the text fields, uh, and it populates all the fields of the addenda or contract or forms that you bring in later. So you'll definitely want to use the cover sheet. Now, which one? Each uh, library tends to have a cover sheet, uh, but the best one typically is MLS. Why? MLS um, usually has the best connection into your forms library, and later on, if you find this buyer a house, when you do find them, you type in the MLS number, hit MLS Connect, and the, that uh, property information will populate your cover sheet and you tend to get the most detail from the MLS's cover sheet. So here I'm going to select my MLS, North Texas real estate information, and drop that in. Now for here on out, I tend to use mostly the uh, Texas Association of Realtor forms, so I'm going to do that now. And the first form, obviously, is the representation. And buyer, oop, a little too much here. Here it is, buyer tenant rep agreement. And by selecting that one, that's kind of my cheat sheet. If, if I head down the lower part of that buyer representation agreement, it's actually going to show you most of the documents that you'd probably want to use, but that's up to you and your broker. I'll pick the ones I like, and I'm going to do an alt print screen and it's going to take a screenshot of what's on the screen here so I can kind of use that as a cue to populate my documents. So if I hit Word and hit Paste, it'll take that screenshot and paste it in Microsoft Word. So that might be helpful to, for me to reference as I'm building this template. So the first thing looks like is information about brokerage services and you'll notice that there's two of those one for the seller one for the buyer if you pick the right one it makes it a little faster when you do the e-signature we got the information about brokerage services we have mold next so let's grab the mold doc Property, information concerning property. Let's see if we can find that one. And I don't see it, so let's type property insurance. Info about property insurance. And notice to buyer general information. And what's next? Lead. The lead information brochure. And then get a home inspection. Now you. Your office policy might be different, but uh, this is what we tend to do. So I've got the common documents that we use with the buyer, at least uh, you know, 60, 70, 80, 90 percent of the time. Um, what else could we kind of preempt or do ahead of time before that buyer comes along? So we could do this once for a template and use this template over and over again. 
I would guess it's uh, one of the parties to the transaction. Uh, which party to the transaction do you think you could predict? How about you? So if I hit new party, you can see I went from documents to parties. Maybe you didn't catch that. I went from documents to parties. I clicked on new and uh, I'm going to give my title in here so it lands my information in the right fields of the cover sheet. That's selling broker. And I could fill it out here if I've never put my contact record in there, but I know that I have. And if that's the case, you can hit add contacts and see your priorly, your prior entered contacts. And there's Mark. I hit save, populates, well, kind of a little bit of a shortcoming of uh, zip forms plus even though I've typed that in there it doesn't automatically show up so I'll reselect that there we go broker ID, the broker name, and my license number once again. Once I've got that complete, I'll hit save. Now the selling broker information should be complete inside any document that requires it, such as, uh, of course, the, the populated uh, cover sheet. If I scroll up here a little bit, or maybe down, you can see that auto, the cover sheet auto populated in the uh, in the one to, uh, the buyer residential rep agreement. And you can see it populated my info there. And what else could I predict or know ahead of time? Well, I only work three counties. Don't go outside there. And mostly just one of those. And that's how my broker told, taught me to do it. You might reference your broker when filling out information like that. I want to address each blank, so I'm going to select none. In my office policy, we select this box right here. Uh, I normally would type my commission in there. If you weren't looking, I would. And then what do we do with new construction? Well, I have a clause here. You've seen this little pencil. I have a clause here that I typed a long time ago. That my broker helped me with. And I call it new construction. Then, uh, anything other? I usually put none here in all cases. So I'm filling out anything that might be predictable. And obviously, when the time comes, uh, I might adjust this in any which way. When I say when the time comes, when we actually got the buyer in hand and we apply the template, we make our corrections at that point. But at least we got much of this fixed up beforehand. And I'm going to hit Save. And I don't think there's much else I can mess with. Let's take a look. Yep, looks good. All right, you've just completed the buyer template. And from this point forward, when you get a new buyer, you just hit new. And I'm back to transactions, by the way. When I get a new buyer, I hit new. I type in the buyer's name. And my organizational approach or naming convention is the date. And the buyer's last name. I'm going to hit purchase. And this is the magic right here. I pick buyer template, save and it populates a brand new transaction that's partially completed uh, for my convenience. 
For this and more cool tips and tricks, join us over at markporterlive.com. And uh, also, if you'd like some one-on-one -on -one training, you could check out markporterlive.com and click on Consulting and schedule an appointment for some training one-on-one -on -one with Mark. Thanks. Have a great day.